So I already said this in my live video on Saturday night, but we did test this and there is no lead paint, but even so, you always wanna make sure you're wearing a mask so you're not inhaling that sanding dust while you're sanding. So I've got my mask here with my respirator. I'm using my orbital sander with 150, but it's pretty worn, so I would say it's probably closer to like 220. Hopefully it's enough. If it's not enough to take it down, I'll go lower, but it's important to start high and work your way down because you don't want to take off too much too fast. I'm going to go over all the flat surfaces and really highlight the edges where it would naturally wear and bring back some of that original white paint. The Orbital does a lot of things, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't get in the corners. Like it stops everywhere right here, and it doesn't do really good on this lip. So I'm just gonna take the exact same sandpaper so that way I've got distressing everywhere. Another little tip because this door is super like chunky, I've got like this leftover residual stuff. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take my flathead screwdriver and I'm just gonna hit the inside of this and I'm gonna chip it off. And that's just gonna give it a little bit more and I can even go like on a few of the raised spots if there's a chunk or whatever that I like and hit it but that will just loosen up any of this old paint on here. To get the width I need, my old door is 31 and 11 sixteenths. So I'm just gonna measure that out here. And I think this door is gonna be pretty close. I'm just gonna have to shave just a little bit right off the edge. So I'm sure there are a ton of better ways to accomplish this, but I don't have a straight edge or a track saw. So I'm just using the factory cut edge on this half inch piece of cabinet grade MDF, this fiber board here, and I'm using that as my straight edge and I'm gonna run my circular saw right down that. I've just clamped it at both ends and that way it'll stay put where it's supposed to be and I'll get a nice straight cut. I know this pantry door already fits on these hinges really well, so I'm just gonna pop these pins out and then I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a template for where I'm gonna put my new hinges because I'm gonna make sure that it's got three like this door has. So this is my old door. This is the bottom top down that way and it's gonna swing in. So I'm just gonna take this right here and it looks like these hinges will almost line up perfectly with the old screw holes on there. But there's three of them on this door and only two on this door. It's gonna mark here the width of them. And this, I've got it lined up with the top up here because the bottom is just gonna be a little shorter. So I've got it lined up with the top that way that part slides nice and easy and I'll have a little bit of gap at the bottom, but that's all right. It's not gonna be an exterior door so it doesn't need to seal up tight. All right, now I'm gonna pull that back off. I'll chisel that spot out right there so that this sits just perfect. And you can use a router if you've got the attachment. I don't have the attachment for the router. So I'm just gonna use a hand chisel and chisel that out to the depth of this hinge.
Okay, that's chiseled out pretty good, fits nice and tight. Okay, so I need to move this down about three quarters of an inch. So to do that, this has got a little catch back here to keep it from wallering the wood out when you close the door. I've just got a three quarter inch Forstner bit and I've already got it marked where I need to go. And I'm just gonna drill this out. Okay, now I'm going to take my chisel and just square that up. Okay, now what I'll do, because I've got, I can put my screw in here, but I've got a gap here, so I'm going to make a little piece of wood and I'm just going to cut that out and then glue that in. And that way I'll, I'll not have a void there and I'll use a longer screw so that it'll go into the door frame a little farther. I've got this little piece that I shaped with my Dremel that I'm just gonna fit in here. I got some wood glue on it. And then this fits right on there. Someone over the years has modified this to be a more modern door jam. So I'm just gonna go back in with the old handle for now that was on the door that was in here until I can find the right style of knob that'll fit in here. All right, that latches. All right, I'll cover that up on the front. And this slides in right here. One bolt there. Last thing to do before I turn it over to Jamie for sealing it is to put this plate back on here and it's just gonna fit right like that, mostly to cover up the hole where the deadbolt would have been. And as soon as I can find a knob that uh, is an older style, I'll replace this. This is just here for now. I thought I had a knob, but it's the long skinny style and someone had cut this out to be more modern at some point and it won't work, so. There we go. I'm gonna let James seal that up and then we'll be done with the door. So we picked up this doorknob at Lowe's. It's a quick set doorknob. It was $14.95. I think it's made for hall and closet. I liked the shape of it. I thought it looked kind of vintage antique. It's got this one part here. I don't want it to flop over. So we've just put it down in here. So that way it'll stay upright. And then this one's flat. We're using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in Flower Sack. It's a pretty not shiny surface, so I think it'll stick really well. Milk paint adheres to metal very, very well, so it'll work out well. And I want it to be kind of chippy, so I'm just using my Paint Pixie brush here. You can get this milk paint and this paintbrush at jamierayvintage.com. It's going to be kind of see-through, this first coat. But then once it dries, the second coat will give me really good coverage and I'll be able to distress it and it should chip off. While the paint's drying on my doorknob, I'm gonna go ahead and seal this door. I'm using a cup I will hide the logo from um, because I don't wanna contaminate my polyacrylic. I'm using Minwax polyacrylic. You could use any of my top coats or big top, 
but I really want a satin finish on this and you definitely don't want to be using dipping straight down into your container because then if you get any paint chips or paint transfer anything it'll mess up your whole wood container we buy about a gallon and so I don't want a gallon contaminated you can see with this DIY paint that when I seal it it goes from like a dark gray to a nice black color this little black dress is our darkest black that the DIY paint line carries I'm getting ready to clean this. It's been sealed. I'm just using this Zep foaming glass cleaner. Any glass cleaner will work. We get this at Costco. And I've just got, the, we picked these up. This is just a razor blade. We get them at the dollar store. You get three in a pack for a dollar. And now that it's, it's got a bunch of old crusty paint that we wanted to get off. I let this sit on here probably about two minutes. That's why I like the foaming glass cleaner because it'll actually stay sitting on there. And then I'm just running it up to the edge here and scraping all of this paint that we added and then paint from previous paint jobs as well. If you tape it off, sometimes you don't always get a very clean, crisp line. So we usually end up having to use the razor blade anyway. So we just don't even bother taping them off. We just come back in and it's, I mean, it's, it's this hard right here, cleaning these up. And I'll wipe it all off with a paper towel. This door handle is already chipped a little bit and I just went over it and I just kind of removed any extra chipping paint. You can see it already looks pretty old, like layered and chippy and chunky. Because you can't put a brand new doorknob in an old door. And then to complete the look and seal it, I'm actually going to use Sweet Pickens Oil Wax in black and that's going to give it a darker look. So hopefully this shows up kind of on camera to show you what this oil wax does. It's also a sealer so it, you don't really need to seal it after this. It just kind of ages this and then once you get it on there, you're gonna, I'm going to let that sit for half an hour and then I'll rub it off and it will just kind of give it an aged look. So we did wind up using extra bond in our milk paint because all the paint completely chipped off which is sometimes what happens with milk paint. So we followed the directions and added extra bond and we got some chippy but not completely all of it chipped off. Yeah. And then it was kind of like this bright white. So you saw that we used the Sweet Pickens oil wax in black, which will actually seal the milk paint, but then it also doled out the white and it didn't make it look dirty like some glazes can do. It's just a really subtle look to give you an aged and it's simple and it's like a glaze and sealer all in one. So it's really cool. Anyways, that's how we made this brand new doorknob look old. And then Zeb can kind of tell you about hanging it. So I just trimmed off the side and then put the hinges on. You guys saw how I did that, how I lined it up with the old door so that I knew exactly how it was. It fit first time. I didn't have to mess around with changing things or chiseling more out. And then the doorknob, we had to change out a couple times because, you know, couldn't have that uh, modern doorknob If, you, if you want to do this, make sure you have the doorknob figured out before you hang the door because I was like stressed out when Zeb called me when I was out running errands. He's like, we don't have any doorknobs. I'm like, you can't put a modern doorknob on an old door. I was just gonna leave it as a temporary solution, but she didn't want it. There was no it. finishing this video until it was right. She didn't even want it for half a minute. She's like, just take it off. Just take, take it, it off. off. It's better <laughs> to have it off than on. So I think this is a great solution. Um, they do make some replica doorknobs that might have worked, but they would have been really expensive. So now this looks totally old and we bought it brand new. Yeah, this was $15 replica doorknobs with like the porcelain stuff on there are around 130 bucks. So. Yeah, no gracias. Oh, that means no thank you. <laughs> Anyways, I think it turned out amazing. I'm super excited. You can see our messy pantry in here. So we've talked about possibly doing a curtain, possibly doing shelves. Zeb wants to do like a full on like butler's pantry, but I just got a new couch. So we'll see who wins as to what the next area is. We'll probably end up putting a curtain on it, probably something drop cloth. So, because I'm going to be doing some lettering in here with some either stencils or I might do it by hand. We haven't but decided what we want. But I want a floral curtain. Well, then you can't have lettering because the floral curtain will just hide everything. You think? We'll yeah. test it out. I'm pretty All right. sure. <laughs> anyway, door's done for now. We'll have a new video up tomorrow. So be sure that you hit that subscribe and notifications button so you don't miss out on any videos. Give us a thumbs up and comment below on any questions you have about hanging old doors or even on how to make new doorknobs look old and chippy.
To achieve the look for the door that we did today, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. For just a quick recap, we used DIY paint in a little black dress, and we painted the knob with Sweet Pickens and Flower Sack, and we used Extra Bond, so that way it would stick to the brand new knob, and we sealed it with oil wax in the, um, oh, it's black, in the black oil wax. So those are all the items that we used today from our website. Be sure to check it out. We appreciate your support.